in simple words is because we link our performance to our self-worth. We believe that our value as humans is dependent on our accomplishments. This intolerance attitude towards imperfection makes us think that we can control the results that avoid suffering. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Freya Lana and thank you for being here today. So in this video, we are diving into a topic that is close to my heart and probably to yours too. So that's why you click on this video. So we're talking about the strange relationship between perfectionism and procrastination. So grab a cup of coffee or tea, sit down and stay tuned. So let's start by talking about perfectionism. It's the nagging feeling that what you do, what you produce, even what you are, it has to be flawless. Sounds good in theory, right? But in practice, it sets up for impossible standards. So how does perfectionism lead to procrastination? Well, it's about fear. If you're constantly aiming for perfection, you're afraid to start a task until you know for sure that it's going to be done perfectly. So this fear keeps us stuck until something more pressing until something pressing overrides that need of perfection. We end up scrambling at the last minute, fueled by desperation and pressure. Anyone else pulled an all-nighter trying to finish a project that you had weeks to work on? Yeah, me too. But why do we do this to ourselves? So in simple words, it's because we link our performance to our self-worth. We believe that our value as humans is dependent on our accomplishments. This intolerance attitude towards imperfection makes us think that we can control the results that avoid suffering. In the back of our minds, we think that if we can control this one thing, if we can make it perfect, then we won't have to deal with negative emotions or damage our self-esteem. But here's the thing, most standards are in our head, created by us. This false sense of control helps us avoid feeling the responsibility of our failures. Sometimes when we want to do something and just at first try, uh, we realize that it's not working as we want it and we are not consistent and maybe we start a lot of things and never finish anything. This reminds me of the fox fable, I think we all know that, where the fox is trying to reach for the grapes. And after trying for some time, he gives up and he says, they probably were sour anyway. <laughs> or that happens with so many things we try and then it's like, oh, that wasn't for me or that's stupid or something like this. We do the same thing <laughs> or I I'll never try this again to protect our egos. But what if we look things differently? There's a Japanese philosophy called wabi-sabi that celebrates the beauty of imperfections. It teaches that nothing is ever perfect and that's okay. So how can we combat this cycle of procrastination and perfectionism? First, try to separate your self-worth from your achievements. Second is try to set realistic goals. And another third step is to practice self-compassion. Perfectionism, it may never fully go away, but we can learn to manage it so it doesn't paralyze us into inaction. That's, for example, like me. I've been wanting to do this, to open a YouTube channel since I was, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 years old, but I've never gained the courage until now. It's been plenty of years because I thought that it wouldn't be as great as I wanted, so why bother? Or I set excuses for myself. I don't have a good camera, I don't have equipment, I don't know how to do this, how to do that. Um, I don't look good, I cannot speak in front of a camera thousand of excuses so don't let this 
paralyze you. <laughs> Remember that done is better than perfect. Don't let your dreams be dreams. There's another example that has been shared in a lot of other videos about the photography teacher that set two groups apart. And then he told one of the groups that they had to make like the perfect picture in terms of composition, light, everything. And then the other group, it was the quantity photos to take as many photos as they wanted. Guess which group uh, won the best picture? Of course, the quantity group, because they were carefree. They were trying. They had more opportunities. The other group only had one shot. They overthink how the picture could be perfect. They had only one chance. That's probably what led them to failure. So yeah, that's a really short video, I know, but if you're still here, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and muchas gracias. See you.